In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the Smart Tool. Now, to enable the Smart Tool, you use this button right here just below the Selector Tool. And when you click on that, it actually shows the enabling of the Trimmer Tool, the Selector Tool, and the Grabber Tool, and you'll see why in a minute. Now, if you don't want to use this button, you can always use the key command. The key command for the Trimmer Tool is F6. The key command for the Selector Tool is F7, and the key command for the Grabber Tool is F8. Now, if you press any two of those three key commands simultaneously, you'll then enable the Smart Tool. So here's an example. I'm going to go ahead and hit F6 and F7 at one time, and you see it enables there. I'll hit F7 to go back to my selector. I'm going to do F7 and F8, and that also does it. So you can use the key command, or you can use this button. Now the reason it's called the Smart Tool is because depending on where I put my cursor depends on the function or the tool that's going to be selected. So here's what I mean. If I'm in the upper half of a region, notice that my cursor turns into the Selector Tool. If I'm in the lower half of a region, notice that my cursor turns into the Grabber Tool. If I go to the end of a region, notice that I get the Trim Tool. And if I go to the beginning region, I also get that trim tool. Now one tool that's not available in the toolbar is the fade tool. So that's only available when you're using the smart tool. And here's how it works. If I go in the upper left corner of a region, I can do the fade in. If I go to the upper right corner of a region, I can do a fade out. And if you have two regions overlapping like we do here, if you go right where they come together, you get the crossfade tool. You can click and drag out a crossfade. So what's nice about the Smart Tool is you've got the selector, the grabber, the trimmer, and the fade tool without having to go back up to that toolbar or use the key command every time. Now, the Smart Tool works great when you're zoomed in like this, but my beef with it is that when you're zoomed out, it's a little bit fidgety, and here's what I mean. Um, if you've got a track height that's set to something like mini or small, um, you can see that trying to figure out where exactly the tool is going to change can be a little bit difficult. It's doable, it's just difficult. So what's going to be really helpful when using the Smart Tool is basically using all the key commands we learned for zooming. So you've got your zoom toggle there. We'll zoom toggle out. You want to be able to use your key commands for adjusting track heights. So you get really good at that. And of course our good friend R and T. And so by combining the Smart Tool with all the good zooming habits we learned, it's actually an effective tool. But the Smart Tool really does rely on zooming, so you need to get them both down to move around fast with the Smart Tool.